So we left off with Mark chapter 3, verse 31 last week, and so we're going to start there and just keep going through the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel according to Mark. So Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35 is our first section. It's Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35. It reads, Then his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside they sent to him, calling him. And a multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him, and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. And Jesus is not saying that you're all three of these. He's saying these are my type of people. These are the people who obey the will of God and are literally spiritually related, the brother, the sister, and the mother. So seeing Jesus defining many th- many things differently from what people would expect, uh, including relationships. And really we see here that Jesus is showing that God is all about reunion. So through him, he's essentially the great uniter. Uh, through faith in him, after this life is over, we will be reunited with those who also have put their faith in Christ. And so even though things are broken here and we're under the curse, we can see restoration. And that will be in the kingdom to come for, uh, for all eternity and in all perfection. So again, whoever does the will of God. So just brief application there. It's an honor to be called as part of Jesus's family. So let's do the will of God for our lives. That may involve getting down and seeking God for for what he would have you do in a certain season. Sometimes calling is a dynamic thing. It's not just a a one-time, well, do this, and then God just leaves you to do it. Sometimes, yeah, God commissions you, and you have a very clear vision, and you can go on that. Sometimes you got to feel it out. Sometimes you just have to pray, and in whatever season he leads you, just be willing to do whatever God wants you to do. So kind of like that video we saw. If if God tells you to to tell him, Chris, then you got to tell him, Chris. (laughs) <laughs> and be, a, be a, a responsible evangelist in season and out of season. So, um, all right, uh, let's go to Mark chapter 4. This puts us at the parable of the sower. Very common, uh, commonly preached on passage and has a lot of good lessons to take. All right, so let's read Mark chapter 4, and uh, we'll read through, um, through verse 9 to start out. And then we'll go to the last half after that. And you, you have on your handout a little you know, table outline or whatnot, so you can, you can fill that out if you have a pen. Does, it, do you, does uh, anyone need a pen? Okay. Uh, cool. <laughs> there we go. Usher Chris is telling him about the pens. All right, we got it. But that, that's a good thing to fill out here. Uh, hopefully just a, a good tool. Um, okay, so Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. And again he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables, and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. All right, so we see the different types of soil. What's the first one? Where the birds come. Some seed falls on. Yeah, right, the wayside or the path. And so a place where people walk and birds can access, and there's, there's absolutely no soil. So seed is dropped on the ground as the initial result. So things dropped on the path of the wayside. We see this first part in Mark chapter 4, verse 4. What is the, what is the next type of soil? All right, so the stony ground or the rocky soil, Mark 4, verse 5, we see that there's, there's quick growth. 
the initial result, there's quick growth, but then it's exposed to the elements. So it grows up and it's exposed to the sun and doesn't have any real route for moisture. What's the third type? All right, so the soil amongst the thorns or the thorny soil. And so the initial result is it starts to grow, but it grows among thorns. So that's not very conducive to growth, is it? <laughs> and then the, the fourth type is the type that we should all emulate and pray for our hearts to be, and that is... All right, so the good fertile ground or the good soil. So Mark 4, verse 8 talks about that. So the initial result, good growth. So good start. We'll see you later. Good finish, but we'll get to that in one second. This is one of the parables that Jesus explains very plainly. Sometimes these parables, they're literally parallel stories. For example, if you have a, a ladder, the two rails essentially are, are parallel, and the, it's kind of like a, a parallel. So you have parallel stories. Um, and so what Jesus is, is doing is explaining a spiritual truth using very common physical terminology. And so people would understand it. It's very simple. That's a lot of the times when uh, the Holy Spirit is backing something. It's very simple and to the point and speaks to many people. And yet some people would still not hear it. And so even though Jesus was speaking plainly, a lot of people was still, were still hard of heart and didn't want to hear it. And so did not understand. And so thus he fulfilled Isaiah's ministry. Where the, he would speak these things and speak mysteries, and yet people would harden their hearts and, and not understand. Essentially make these people's hearts fat. That's what, uh, what it says in the King James and uh, yeah, from Isaiah. But uh, All right, let's read uh, verses 10 through 20 of Mark chapter 4. And this is the explanation. So he's approached, and yeah, those around him with the 12, not just the 12, but they asked him, what in the world does this mean? So he gives this illustration. All right, so verses 10 through 20. Let's read. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may not hear and not understand, or, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn, and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. So we can look at all these soils and we can look to the, the result. So the first soil, the, the wayside or the path, the result, the seed is dropped on, well, the initial result, the seed is dropped on the ground, and the final result, what happens? All right, so it's snatched away. Who, who snatches it away? Yep. So it is Satan, a.k.a. the adversary, also known as the devil, the enemy. And Satan comes and robs us of the word taking root. So if you have that path soil, it's something where perhaps in a situation maybe someone just does not pay attention or doesn't deem it important, uh, yeah, maybe the volume's not up enough, <laughs> and just they don't hear it. But we have here that what could what could take root? Satan immediately comes and takes it away and robs it. And the thief is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And so one of the things he's stealing the the uh, fruit of the word. And so for the final harvest, what happens? What's the final fruit? It's nothing, right? So there's no final harvest. There's nothing. What about the rocky soil? You see here, Mark 4, 16. Well, okay, the initial result, there's quick growth and it's exposed to the elements, but since it has no depth, there's no way for it to get moisture, and thus it scorches. And so literally there's no depth, and so there's no growth. 
as believers, we definitely need to have roots. We need to be rooted, be uh, be encouraged, grow, be nourished. I think that's the the key part there is to be nourished. Part of that is fellowship with other believers. Part of that is reading the Word, spending time with God, and really listening for what what He has uh, for you to take each day. Um, so the final harvest again, that's a withered plant <laughs> or nothing really, nothing usable. The thorny soil. It starts to grow among thorns in Mark 4.18. And then the final result, it's choked by the thorns. And so it doesn't grow. There's, again, no harvest. And again, you get this little fragment of a plant that's that's choked. So, um, yeah, it's something we, we don't need to to be in thorny soil. We'll get to, to some of that in a sec with application. Uh, good soil. It, it starts out well, it starts with good growth. Final result, it grows well. Soil is fertile and conditions are ideal for growth. And so the good soil, again, what we want to have, and, and may we all have good soil, uh, that God would give us a soft heart that would be receptive to his word and would apply it and would be just joyfully following and serving him uh, out of love. Um, all right, so so the four types of soil there. Um, the final harvest on the on the last type is is much more encouraging. You have essentially zero, 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 and then you have a lot. <laughs> and so thirty fold, sixty fold, a hundred fold, and it's not necessarily it's not a passage saying well the the gold members will have a hundred x, and the silver members will get sixty x, but then the the bronze the basic members will get thirty x fruit. It's in some situations God is going to reward you with with various. Uh, amounts of abundance, and so it's not giving you a quantity. It's not saying that someone can only lead a hundred people to the Lord. It's not saying you know you can only make thirty disciples when you're when you're here, um, and it's not a measure of um, it's not a measure of, of exact uh, correspondence. It's just saying God does abundantly, and so what what happens here with, for example, a tree? A tree will grow up, and for for example, an apple tree. You get one apple tree, you plant the seed, it grows up after time, many years, and then you, you get tons of apples from it, and it keeps growing, and so it bears continual fruit. And that's the, the ultimate uh, form of, of blessing, is, is God just plants you by those streams of living water and uh, gets you growing fruit in your season, like the Psalm 1 blessing of, of blessed is the man or the person who fears the Lord. And um, yeah, we see that he, he bears his fruit in his season. So, uh, again, much fruit comes from good soil, and so we need to be receptive to God's Word. So, applications here. All right, with the good soil, so I guess starting from the bottom here, again, be receptive to God's Word, apply it, meditate on it, let it bear much fruit in your life. All good things to take. You can fill in several others in that spot. (laughs) Be obedient to Jesus' command to make disciples of all nations. And uh, and in your in your own life too, be a disciple. That's something that a lot of people do neglect as well. So they make disciples and then they get worn out and forget about being a disciple. And it's something we can also lose sight of and, and be deceived with. So we need to to be a disciple as well as make disciples. And a disciple again, one who follows in the footsteps of so with with Jesus, following Jesus and becoming mature, and not just having the milk of the word, but also the meat, the thorny soil. I know you don't have to copy every word down. Um, <laughs> you can pull out your audio recorder. Um, okay, so thorny soil. Um, do do not walk in the flesh. We see the things that, that are uh, involved in thorny flesh here. And, uh, yeah, you see that the, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desires for other things entering in, and it's talking about the, the worldly concerns that can that can draw us away. Interesting also in Hebrews chapter 12 where it says, uh, cast off every sin and everything that so weighs us down, everything that burdens us. And that's one of the things. It's, it's also part of, part of the curse to have your focus on something else that's, that may be good. And in that case, the good is the enemy of the best. Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes the best is the enemy of the good. But with everything relating to God, we need to, to focus on him first. And so uh, whether it's a blessing from God, we can't focus on that, number one. We always have to appreciate God's blessing and focus on Him first. So again, don't walk in the flesh. Don't 
go for the American dream and go all out with that and, and not thank God for every little blessing that you get. Because, yeah, the whole idea with the American dream is, oh, well, the humanistic perspective of, hey, we got this far, we, we achieved it, we pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps, and, you know, our our uh, our car is, is better, I guess bigger, <laughs> bigger and better, um, guzzles gas better, but we don't even care because our wallets are bigger, and then our houses are bigger, our waistlines are bigger. You, know, you took a few extra trips to McDonald's because you're so wealthy, but really with the American dream, it's, it's a lot of fluff, and it's also not about just having children and carrying on propagating i guess the what propagation of the human species it's not just about that either it's it's another blessing that god gives and it's it's part of the picture but a lot of people live for that as well they're just like oh well we just have to reproduce and that's it then we can die and that's it the whole evolutionary perspective <laughs> it's not a very romantic idea either it's just it's a blessing from god to have a child and look to psalm 127 with that as well as uh, children are her- heritage or a blessing from the lord all right, so those are some good things, and if God blesses you financially, great. If God blesses you with kids, great, even better, I'd say. But um, yeah, here we, we have to obey God's calling. We have to, again, have good soil and, and obey and follow Him wherever He leads us. So that's part of uh, His mission on our lives. Um, so again, don't walk in the flesh, don't be distracted. Good applications from the thorny soil. Rocky soil. All right, another thing there. In, in application of, of approaching people who seem to be rocky soil, we are to make disciples, the key word there. That's the main commandment in Matthew 28. It's, it's literally the only imperative 